Okay, Torn Harris did not practice, Lamar Dawson, Matt Khalil, Amir Carlisle, and um, a couple updates on longer term guys. Marquis Simmons is out for the season with the neck. Um, Abe Markowitz, John Katnick, and Cody Gif Gifford all had surgery out for the season. And uh, Gio uh, did as well. Christian Thomas now will have hip surgery. He'll be out for the season as well. So um, just that time of year where their injuries start to mount. Uh, and a lot of times the down the line guys affect you, you know, with your service teams and stuff. So we need guys to step up all over the place. As far as practice, I thought it was good. Um, defense did a good job of uh, forcing a couple of turnovers and getting after the ball. And um, you know, obviously that's been our emphasis for a long time and continues to be this week. With Marquise, did they find some sort of a fracture or something? Yeah, it's nothing with surgery, just something in his neck where he's, he won't be cleared for a couple months. So um, it'll be, you know, it'll be all the way till spring till we'll get to practice with him again. Well, with those list of guys that you mentioned, uh, how, how does that affect the, the long term? Well, what it really does is it, what we've seen over the last two years now, you know, with the reductions and stuff, a lot of times it's not necessarily your frontline guys. We've been fortunate not to lose those guys in transfers or, or injuries. But it's the next tier guys as those guys are transferring out and they're getting injured and they're out for the season where it affects your service teams. And so it's just something that we got to continue to try to work on. And that's why we do a little bit more work against ourselves than we used to um, because of the service team issues. Um, you, keep, you had the guys in pads today. Last Wednesday you did not. Is, is that a conscious decision to try to, you know, improve the tackling and so forth? Well, Usually we do. We just were so banged up going into last Wednesday, and there were so many things that happened last Tuesday with guys that um, just was trying to keep guys off of the ground. Um, nothing really about a mentality. Um, we still practiced physical, and then um, we're just hoping to push them through today and a um, bunch of little stuff again today, but I um, just thought it was important. Yesterday you talked about this being a point in the season after the fourth game and young guys and where they should be. What's going on with George Farmer? Is, do you have any plans with him, and where's he at? Yeah, George is doing great for us. Um, we've made a decision uh, with George and his family to redshirt him to, because he was so far behind with some injuries and stuff early on and really have had a great, um, really, three weeks with him on the service team. He's, he's played quarterback, he's played tailback, he's played receiver, and we've actually been putting him in a running back individual and uh, looks great there. So if that could work out, that's something he did before he got to Sarah, played running back, and that would be real exciting, you know, a guy that's a big guy, like give us a big physical guy, you know, that, you know, one of the fastest guys in the country. So um, that would be exciting. So we're looking at that, you know, because as we look at that position, you know, we're still we're still lacking game-making speed back there as we continue to see in games. How is Andre Walker faring back to tackle? Well, it's a tough transition. You know, unfortunately for him, we've been moving him back and forth, just trying to um, find a way to get him in there. You know, he's done some good things out there, but you got to go back out and the sets become different. You know, so, um, <laughs> Unusual to move a true freshman at this point of the year, but it was just it was too important for us to get you know get some competition out there at right tackle. How has practice been different uh, after some turnovers last week? Trying to eliminate that. It really hasn't. You know we we're doing the same thing that we did last time we were here when we were the best in the world at turnover margin. There's nothing different as far as emphasis or practice, and um, it'll turn around. How's the attitude been on basically turning the page and putting out of the past and moving forward? It's been great. You know, don't even talk about it. And um, guys that have practiced well and prepared well, and you know, this is a great challenge for us to come back home, get to four and one, and go into a bye. Hey, a a lot of, I think a lot of people would be happy with that. You mentioned seventy percent passing, no picks. How good is he right now? Yeah, it's really just—it's amazing. You know, as you line up in this conference, how many great players there are. You know, NFL quarterbacks, big, physical, strong arm guys. I think more than anything for him, what's phenomenal is to be 10 touchdowns, no interceptions, and you're behind big in three games. And usually, as you saw in our game, that's where the turnovers start happening as you're trying to play catch up. So it says a lot for their coaching and a lot for him. You mentioned um, a couple weeks ago about how Mike Williams struggled at Kansas State and then went on to have a great year. Is that the best example of a guy who kind of reached this point in the season and then didn't play like a freshman anymore that you can think of? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's. You know, there's a bunch of them, but that's the one we revert back to because I think it was so glaring, you know, as you talk about that day in, at Kansas State. You know, I think he had six, seven, eight drops. I don't remember exactly what it was. You know, and ran some wrong routes and stuff, and um, we had really put a lot on him. And he came out there, and, and that was a tough environment. And then managed to come back and, you know, set every freshman record in the country after that. So 
um, you know, we showed that to our guys as motivation about how, you know, you're going to go through these these times, but we're going to play you. You know, we know these things are going to happen, and you're going to be better down the road. And so we have a lot of guys that we're looking for that to happen. Do you expect to see Red uh, starting at tight end and Ross at full back? No, you know, that'll be something, you know, we'll continue to look at, but I don't think we'll start that way. Um, people have, one of the problems your defense has had with the last year and a half or so is when teams spread you out. <coughs> Um, and it was again, you know, somewhat the case last week. What, how do you get better against those teams that are going to spread the field horizontally against you? Well, it comes down to assignments and tackling. You know, when you get spread out, your mistakes get magnified. And so, when you miss a tackle, you know, maybe you know we missed some in the first couple of games. But there's another guy right there because everything's in tight. But once you get spread out and you miss that tackle, um, you know, or you fit the thing wrong, like we did on the long run, we did both on that. You know, we let the ball get outside. Torn was wrong, and then. Wanton's tackle, you get exposed in their big plays. So uh, we tackled again this week in some drills, and we've got to make sure that we do a great job assignment-wise and tackling. Coach, a win is a win, but uh, going into a bye week, how more important is it to make sure you don't have two straight losses going into that with a long mindset that you don't want to have? Oh, I don't think that way. <laughs> um, you know, we just think about winning this game and getting a four and one and going into the bye. You know, we just always want to paint a positive picture of what we feel is going to happen that day. What have you seen out of Isaiah Wiley, and is that someone who could push his way into a into a role in the defense? Yeah, we hope so. Um, you know, Torn being banged up, you know, if he's not there this week, hopefully Isaiah will get a chance to play some as he did last game a few snaps. And what set Isaiah back was he was going to be a mid-year, and then he, he got pushed back to not come into the fall. So you know, that it's always tough on junior college guys to come in that quick into a system. So um, hopefully he can help us out. Do you, feel, do you feel like with the reprimand that they sort of took Vontez Burfecht's side over Barkley? Some of the fallout, the comments have been that the conference sort of stood behind Burfecht as opposed to Barkley. That's a setup right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in full support of the conference's decision. Um, that was something that, you know, I didn't make it public, but that was something we'd already talked to. Look at that. That's a bad looking athlete right there. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. <laughs> so that was something last week, you know, at, as it came to my attention that I addressed with Matt. Um, we weren't pleased with it. We talked about it to our team all the time. Our guys had done well with that. And so unfortunately, Matt said that. It didn't have anything to do with the game. Um, but, you know, as I said yesterday, and I'll always say, I don't know how you find a better person to represent college athletics. And, um, you know, what we want Trojans to be, Matt Barkley on and off the field and everything that he does. Have you, um, your experience in the SEC and the system here, have you? Call any instances where a player has been reprimanded by the conference for something they said as opposed to something they did on the field? I can recall where a coach was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can recall a player. That's more NFL, you know, where, where that happens. So, um, but I think, you know, I think it's the new direction of the conference. And, you know, I think Larry's done an awesome job and he's trying to take it to a high level. level and and hold people accountable regardless. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people really Matt Barkley that, you know, come on. But, um, you know, I think it says a lot for the standards that he's set. Right? Did you counsel him based on your experience, having had a similar experience? <laughs> um, he's fine. You know, I think Matt, the thing you got to remember about Matt is Matt can't lie and he can't really, like, say anything different than the way he feels. It's who he is. And so um, he feels, you know, that's just the way that he feels. I mean, I woke up Saturday morning and the Arizona paper said, you know, Matt Barkley didn't say anything we don't all know, so we're moving over. Is there a scenario where you would take the red shirt off George Farmer, like if he was progressing in practice? We thought about it, you know, but we've just gone that direction right now, and, um, you know, we'll stay that direction unless, you know, some unforeseen things happen. But we're really excited about him and his future here and um, the way he looks. And, Sometimes as you redshirt the guys, especially highly recruited guys, they get better immediately because the pressure comes off. You know, remember these national top 10 players, they have so much pressure put on them to, you know, to, be, to do the same thing that Robert Woods did. And um, as soon as it doesn't go that way, they're hearing every week from every person around them, why aren't you doing this, why aren't you doing that, and, and it mounts. And then they're just trying to go to school and be a normal freshman. So um, a lot of times we've seen it help guys, and it relaxes them, and they come out here and just like him, he's practiced great. Have you heard back from the U League office yet about the TJ McDonald penalties? <laughs> we have not. No. Are you rethinking your two-point conversion philosophy at all? No. You know that. You know the chart at that time. You know says to go for it there, and um, you know we come up a couple of inches short. So um, 
we'll stick with it. But aren't there times though that uh, it's a downer for the guys after a touchdown? It's like if we don't make it here, and you don't really need the two points. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's a, you got you got to weigh that in. Even though numbers will tell you in certain times that, that there's times, you know, you do have to take momentum into account. And even that, even that instance, I thought about kicking it. You know, but the numbers just tell you, you know, to lean so much towards going for it there that we did. Are there any guys that are standing Last out one. that you think we're overlooking? Guys that are standing out that you're overlooking. Um, I don't know. I mean, you probably don't know, you know, overlook Marquis Lee after two touchdowns in a row. But um, I just think he's going to be a great player, and we got to do a better job of getting him the ball.